Zezo nam ni yu ube, tiri pebe ge lop yong la cham di shu ngata da. Nye yu ri ta ge shing ngon sam den cho ta, ge shi la tor nam ni ne, nang sal mami shal jen nang yu. अब मैं हमारा सीडीए का डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर हिमांशु पांडे जी से निवेदन करता हूं कि वे इस कार्यक्रम के अतिथियों का स्वागत भाषण करें ताशी दिलेक डिग्निटीज ऑन द डायस द ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर गेसे नवांग सेमता सर द डिस्टिंगिस लर्नर्ड स्पीकर ऑफ दिस ओकेजन डॉक्टर गेशे लोकदौर सर the member of the organizing committee, teaching staff, non-teaching staff, participant, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all on this occasion, inaugural ceremony of this two days national workshop on the sea learning. And I welcome you all on the behalf of Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies and on my own behalf. It's an honor for us so uh, that the Honorable Vice Chancellor sir has uh, given his concern and taking time off from his busy schedule and agreed to be the chief guest of this occasion. Thank you so much sir. We are privileged and honored that Gese uh, Lagdor sir has agreed to be a resource person for this two days national workshop on sea learning and agreed to deliver the talk on the sea uh, learning to, for you all. And I hope that all the participants and students will be benefited by his lecture during these two days. Thank you so much. Respected Vice Chancellor of this university, Dr. Iman Shu, and uh, the teacher training participants. I am delighted to be with you and to speak a few words, but I will be speaking primarily from notes already given by other people <laughs> and notes which I agree or uh, I believe that they are true and very important rather than my trying to come up with many things. If you look at how the whole system of school came into being, actually the origin is very apathetic, not very cheerful. <laughs> it started, uh, according to some people, they say this is Perusian model. In the year 1806, Napoleon defeated Prussia, terribly defeated. And then this defeated country consulted one of their greatest scholar and intellectual, Wilhelm von Humboldt. What should we do? We are completely defeated. Then he said we should give training to the young people to introduce nationalism, heroism, and fight against. Then he devised this compulsory and rigorous education, mainly to train young men to be obedient soldiers. It was these Prussian schools that introduced many of the features we now take for granted, teaching by age group, then by ability, which, men, which makes sense for military recruits than for cultivating rounded citizens. I said it is pathetic because now we are following this process of schooling very carefully. Look at the situation. Around from age of five, kids are sent to school for next 12 to 16 years, and they are held in cells called classroom. School is still highly authoritarian, and indoctrinating place. You can't move. Imagine people sitting there, just like you have the experience, sitting there for around eight, nine 
hours in a in a in a room where there's not not much movement. And there there was a formal pedagogy, teachers standing and students sitting rather than walking around together as is did in ancient Greek fashion. America and British followed, British mainly to produce clerks. Training of students is primarily to produce clerks just as computer parts are produced. Computer parts are produced in one factory which can be supplied to anywhere in the rest of the world. There is a need for that part. So human beings are produced in a similar way. Where there is a need for a clerk, they are trained. So they, they send it there. <laughs> so that kind of education we are following very faithfully. And these this people that is produced in the school should be so identical. BA, China, somewhere BA. If you do BA, everybody, 100,000 people BA, 100,000 people MA, you know. Identical, you can pick one from New Zealand and ship it to Canada, and he would be instantly functional. This is for the administrative machine made of interchangeable parts, in this case, human beings. That's one thing I wanted to say. The second thing that we need to know, as Mahatma Gandhi also said, that the system of education that we have here in India also is modeled on British process of education. And he says the government merely jumped into the saddle of horse that was already galloping. So there was only risk of falling and not much possibility to control it. And Mahatma Gandhi complained later that the British had uprooted a beautiful tree because in ancient times there is this process of Gurukul education where there is a very close connection between teacher and student. There is kindness, there is compassion, there is all-round growth, but not so much. Now we are produced, like as I said, a part of machine. In India, and elsewhere, the dismally low standards in many state-sponsored schools nearly always associated with centralized control. We boast and say that children are spending more time in schools and more money is being spent on education. And according to one scholar by the name Proud, he says this means nothing, spending more time in the school <laughs> and more money for the school means nothing if that education is failing to enable to children to learn. So in this connection, I don't want to waste much of your time because I have many more sessions to waste your time. <laughs> and one of the problem is that the 19th century system of education is to some extent useless in facing the educational challenges of today and innovation. There's hardly any innovation. We are all mugging up, as somebody said yesterday, that we are all kind of photocopy machines. We copy what the teachers say, we copy what is there in the book, and you, you don't hardly use your human capacity to innovate, to think, to create. That's the problem. And there, it is in this context that thinkers like Einstein, he said, these days teachers bring havoc in the life of children because they ask what the children don't know, they never take care of what is the capacity of the children and nurture that talent, nurture that capacity. Right? And especially something that's really relevant to you is they will teach you how to swim but never take you to the river and to ma actually make you s swim. They'll talk about apples, but never give you apple to eat and taste it. So that, that, that is another kind of drawback of uh, the present system of edu education. There are many interesting things I, I want to skip. Then another thing, there are many interesting things which I will tell you later. One 
one thing that is important for you is authorities should not just confine in the reports and paperwork that is very much there in today's society. Just to take a group photo, do some paperwork, and then say the workshop was wonderful, beautiful, whatever that means. But actual state of school <coughs> education, people don't take much care. And we don't also see regularly how much we have implemented those resolutions and outcomes of meetings and conferences, and especially like His Holiness the Dalai Lama's visions, how much we are actually not only reading, but how much we are actually implementing it in the classroom. Recently, His Holiness said to the nuns, and also during one of the great prayer festivals, Chondra Mulam Tuji, he spoke about developing larger perspective and unity, which is something related especially to the Tibetans. And another very important thing that we need to pay attention in terms of education is the role of ethics, which we are going to talk when we talk about the social emotional learning. And the real process of teaching ethics or values should be demonstrated by living examples of the teacher, not just by talking. And it's not enough that you appoint a monk and then say we have teaching on values and morality. Not only ethics, the work of learning, disseminating, and teaching, and teaching should be done by all laymen and women through their examples. And another thing that I would like to read is, is again Einstein. There's a lot of quotations from Einstein. I was very attracted by some of his quotations, where he says, the value of an education in a liberal arts college is not the learning of many facts, but the training of mind to think something that cannot be learned from textbooks. Buddha did not go to a particular school or university to learn facts. Similarly, many great thinkers, they learned from the nature, from their life's experiences, not from textbooks. So for, for learning the facts, especially today, you need the Google teacher, nothing else. Just find the facts. And especially humiliation and mental operation by ignorant and selfish teachers wreak havoc in the youthful mind that can never be undone and often exert a baleful influence in later life. And then he says, to me, the worst thing seems to be for a school principally to work with the methods of fear and force and artificial authority, which you should not when you become teacher. You're going to become teacher very soon. Such treatment destroys the sound sentiments, the sincerity, and the self-confidence of the people. The aim of education must be the training of independently, independently acting and thinking individuals who, however, see in the service to the community their highest life achievement. Service to the community, their highest achievement. The schools should always have as its aim that the young person lift the school as a harmonious personality, not just as a specialist. Otherwise, he with his specialized knowledge more closely resembles a well-trained dog than a harmoniously developed person. The real difficulty, the difficulty that has baffled the sages of all times is this. How can we make our teaching so potent in the emotional life of man that its influence should withstand the pressure, sometimes I use the word pressure cooker society, pressure of the elemental psychic forces in the individual. The crippling of the individuals, I consider the worst evil of capitalism. Our whole education system suffers from this evil. All exaggerated competitive attitude, competitive attitude, right? is inculcate, inculcate into the student who is trained to worship material success as a preparation for his future career. 
which of course do not bring success. How is it possible that this cultural loving era could be so monstrous, monstrous, monstrously immoral? More and more I come to value charity and love of one's fellow being above everything else. They understand some of the other Vinobhabhavi spoke about four principles of education. Students should be made self-sufficient as quickly as possible. Earn his living by his own labor. Not only after you finish school, but even while you are studying, you should be able to come up with many processes of earning your own living looking after yourself. Economic self-sufficiency is and must be one of the aims of education. Make the student self-sufficient in the matter of acquiring knowledge. There is a saying in Sanskrit that when a son has attained the age of 16, he should be treated as a friend, not as his child or his son. Increase his knowledge of the world of nature Get the understanding of linguistic principles, linguistic principles, by which one can learn other languages. Other languages for themselves. Teach them how to teach themselves. Not just getting teaching from the teacher, but teach them how to teach themselves. Put in their hands the key to knowledge. They make their words. If he could manage to make I like this press very much. For example, he says, if you are looking for a cook, and in order to hire that person as a cook, if you make him, how, how good he is making in chapatis. So if, you, if he is able to make, if you ask him to make 100 chapatis, and then see how good at he is, and out of this 100 chapatis that he is to make, he was able to make only 25 or 30 good chapatis and rest, rest are burnt chapatis. Will you recruit that person as a good cook? He says no. But he says in the case of education, if you get 33 person, you are passed. So what he is really saying is the boys or girls' knowledge to be 100%. 33% 40% 100% 100% is possible. Sometimes we think, how can I get 100% knowledge? It's possible if you really go into the depth of each and every subject. It is possible that you become really well versed in that and get whether you, in terms of mark, you get 100 or not, but you, in terms of your knowledge, you get 100% knowledge. That is what he's saying. He must feel quite sure that a thing is so. Then another important thing. In a nonviolent society, we live in a nonviolent society. In a nonviolent society, education itself is the means for defense, not army. And this is something that I've been repeatedly saying, especially in India, because India should be proud of it is soft power than the hard power. Hard power is power of arms, power of gun, power of military. Soft power is power of culture, power of education. That's what we should focus in general, and especially in terms of education. In a nonviolent society, education is itself the means of defense. And the better our education, the less we should need to spend on police and on the army. If you give too much, and this is something that we are seeing in a phenomenal way, that wherever there's some disagreement, you send army, you send police force. And I've been thinking for, for the last some months or something, the way the police treating people everywhere, the way the, I see how, how, how did they, this whole system came into being? You know, when something is not functioning, you just send force and then quill them and misuse their power. So that is also because of the lack of proper education among the masses. And the better our education, the less we should need to spend on police and on the army. Education has a social and national goal, as well as, as well as individual goal. The goal of education for the nation, for humanity, must be free from fear. 
wherever you are in that society, in that country, you should be able to live in that country with calmness of mind, without fear. But in many countries in the world today, unfortunately, people don't have that calmness. There's a lot of fear and pressure from all quarters. So for humanity must be free from fear, not only for this country, but for the worldwide community of men. The only right kind of education is that which strengthens the forces of love and peace. The third principle of education to my mind is this, that work and knowledge must never be separated. Highly, highly important. Sometimes in the system of education, now they talk about 3H. That means head, heart, and hand. In many of the cases, education means head. The rest two heart, H are missing. Heart is also not there. Compassion, love is not there. It's only a little bit of intellectual, dry intellectual <coughs> knowledge. And hand, people don't know. Even if they like to go, goes out, nobody knows how to handle it. There's no practicality. So therefore, he says, the third principle of education to my mind is this, that work and knowledge must never be separated. There is no knowledge without action and no action without knowledge. We do not learn what a mango is by reading about it. We learn about mango by eating it, but by eating one. The separation of learning from labor results also in social injustice, economic injustice. Abolition of justice, that must be the goal of our education. Abolition of injustice, that must be the goal of our education. The fourth, right human way of living. The more closely we can live in harmony with nature, the decay of human living in harmony with the nature, the more closely we live in harmony with the nature, the greater our welfare and happiness will be. Sarvodhya economics is based on two great principles. The whole population should be closely in touch with nature, which means agriculture, agriculture and things like that. Real human being will be reached only when the greater part of life can be given to all other interests that make up the world of man. So I, I was tempted to read this. Right? So to, to summarize, as human beings, we want happiness, do not want suffering. Happiness comes by living in harmony with nature. Happiness comes by regulating your emotions. Happiness comes by caring and loving and taking responsibility for the well-being of the whole world, the whole humanity. And I must summarize by saying one thing which really is striking, and I've been sharing this to many, many people. If you look at human beings that inhabit, inhabit this world and the natural environment in which we inhabit, compare these two things, the, the external nature and the human beings living in it. Human beings living within the environment, within the nature, are very much biased, divisive. My country, his country, this country, that country, men, women, black, yellow, we're very fond of dividing and then fighting, right? Now, on the other hand, you look at the nature. Nature is unbiased. If there is a flood, it will shake everybody. It will never say that I'll shake only the Tibetans or not the Chinese or things like that. It will shake everybody. We'll all suffer, just like the coronavirus. <laughs> coronavirus is not saying I will, I will infect only the Chinese who are already infected. It will infect everybody if you come into touch with it. So that's why everybody is now scared how to deal with it. So it is in this perspective, His Holiness is saying, we need to think big. We need to have larger perspective because if you temper, if you do not take care of the environmental destruction, the pollution of air, the water, you know, so forth, we'll all suffer. While you talk about just your country, you will all suffer. So therefore, developing this larger perspective, we need to live a life which is in harmony with the law of nature. Thank you very much.
Center for Teachers Education uh, has been organizing very often uh, different programs, uh, not only for the uh, students and teachers of this uh, center, but also we have uh, been inviting students and teachers from outside, from the neighboring uh, schools and uh, teachers of uh, universities and uh, schools as well uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in the neighborhood. And also um, occasionally we invite from outside. And also we have been doing some good uh, works like uh, recently um, some workshop and was done uh, for developing uh, debate uh, in mathematics and such. These are some of the very innovative kind of, uh, um, you know, the activities uh, which require to be, you know, um, done and also which is a call of the time uh, because now we are entering into many other areas uh, in terms of uh, developing curriculum and uh, curriculum and um, reading materials and uh, pedagogical materials. Uh, in uh, other s subjects uh, uh, for um, training, um, for giving the training of debate in those subjects. So uh, s these two days are primarily on C learning, and the C learning is uh, uh, based on the vision of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, uh, who has been for the last year. Uh, uh, many decades uh, have been advocating uh, the need of change of education in the whole world. As Kishil Hatola has been saying that uh, the education has been uh, very differently uh, developed. We can see how the leadership of the country, you know, uh, envisions the necessity of uh, education. That. Uh, really draws the future of education. When there was uh, industrialization in the Western world, so they needed industrial workers who understands and who can understand the nitty gritty of the machines and things like that. So their need was to just simply confined to a person who can work in the industries. And that is one of the reason that uh, why the retirement age has been limited to 58 and 60, because by that time one loses the muscle, you know, the power. So that was primarily, I had lots of debate with the Indian government and officials and uh, in many platforms that why we have the, uh, you know, the, the retirement age at 58 and 60, why we are following that. In fact, the British has also, which has introduced this in the education system, is now, have, they have changed. So why we are still, you know, struggling with the 58, 50, 60 retirement age, when the scholars at that age becomes uh, very rich, in wisdom and his uh, practices in various uh, uh, disciplines, right? So that is why there are so many elements to be addressed in modern education, but uh, it is something that uh, there are certain points which can be retained, right? So, uh, particularly in, and, and therefore, not only the industrialization, but also the all education system is driven on the knowledge of a material world, right? Because once the science dominated the culture of the country, then the science very much emphasizes on the, uh, the knowledge of the material world, the world we have uh, in which we live, but not about how we think and the, at the mental level. So that is one of the main reason that in the whole Western world, uh, prior to the in introduction of uh, industrialization or emergence of industrialization, the, the domination of science has changed the direction of education. That was very much basically grounded on that, right? And then, in particularly in the case of uh, India, Lord Macaulay's, uh, you know, the 
when he made a visit to India, then he found that uh, he traveled uh, throughout India, and then uh, he found that uh, if somebody has left a bag or stuff or, or on the bus stand or a public place, and uh, he comes back, he can find it. So if that is the situation, and everybody is, uh, you know, coordinative, cooperative, and uh, con contented to, with their life, and there is a more compassionate kind of, you know, uh, attitude within the society. Once, when he found that, he reported in the, you know, gave a, an address in the parliament saying that uh, given this situation, so long as India has this kind of strength, it's not a government strength, it is a public strength, cultural strength, educational strength, and we cannot do anything to India. So therefore, we have to break that, uh, you know, education system and make them, make India to feel that uh, their education system is obsolete, is uh, inferior to what, uh, you know, we will be teaching. And ours would be technological, scientific, and then education, which is primarily based, as Gishil Autola said, is production of clerks, workers for the, for the English, you know, government. In fact, those who have passed barristers, those who have done, you know, um, um, so-called um, obtained some degrees uh, by visiting uh, the by going to um, the colleges and universities outside India and within India. So those are primarily aimed to bring out uh, clerical, you know, uh, the workers in the system of uh, Indian government. And once they have been very successfully, you know, successful in changing the mentality and changing the system of education in India and making it that uh, your cultural and traditional education system is uh, not worthy and it is obsolete. It doesn't yield any production, but, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, um, useless, right? So this happened, and we can see that uh, the, the, the how within the society there was a kind of trend. Those who are trained in those systems started looking down on the uh, you know, cultural kind of educational system. So that is how it broke the backbone of Indian edu traditional education system, and they have been very successful in that. But now, the problem about the current modern education system is that uh, it does not uh, you know address the human basic problems right it does not address the problems that we have individually socially right and rather it creates more problem in fact so the modern education certainly provides, uh, it is now dominated with the modern, uh, you know, scientific education, but we should be very careful that uh, the scientific education, the, the, the knowledge of science and the scientific knowledge and that uh, the science has produced is uh, really commendable and we must, uh, you know, uh, give the credit to, to the science and the technology. But the people who use the technology that depends a lot. They have uh, developed the, you know, the atom bomb, understanding the power and nature of atom. But this can be, this is used for many, many uh, good things, good purposes. At the same time, we have seen how atom bomb has been disastrous, right? So this depends on the persons who are behind such, you know, technology. And what kind of technology is being made, that depends on the mind, which is, you know, not given in the modern education system to prepare that mind, right? And that is totally neglected in the modern education system. So that is one of the reasons why His Holiness has been advocating that modern education requires, necessarily requires to be changed in terms of, you know, providing insight of the mentality and uh, developing ethical life, developing, you know, uh, measures and mechanisms 
to bring transformation of mind and emotion. That is one of the reasons that why uh, the social, emotional, uh, and ethical learning uh, has been, you know, very successful. It has been in um, it has been in schools uh, for many years, uh, uh, introduced in many. Uh, you know, universities and also schools, uh, particularly in Canada, United States, European countries. And it has been found tremendously helpful, right? Because the social emotional learning is based on the, the, the science of mind that uh, uh, we have, right? The belonging to the tradition of Nalanda of ancient India. So this provides a completely a new picture of uh, science of mind insight into the mind, that how our mind works, how our, you know, the, the emotions function. So Gishila will be giving you the, you know, discourses uh, in the coming two days about details of uh, how emotions function, what are the causes and conditions. Because generally, understanding of emotion is, uh, you know, if you have emotion, everybody, whenever you, you know, when you get up in the morning, then, you are bombarded with emotions, right? Till you are, you, you go to bed and sleep, go to sleep, right? So till that time, we have bombardments of uh, emotion, but modern education does not provide uh, how to deal and handle these emotions, right? And we do have a very rich culture and a system which provides the details of these emotions and the causes and conditions, what are their impacts, how they can be handled, how you know we can handle these things, and uh, uh, as a result of that, uh, how it impacts your <coughs> behavior, and then consequently, how it impacts your you know, relation with others, and then uh, how you can benefit and make contribution to the society. So this is how, you can, it is manageable. Many s scholars have been saying that uh, emotions uh, uh, cannot be, you know, um, regulated. And uh, emotions, for example, anger, when it comes, let it come, let, and then it will go by itself, but you cannot have any role to regulate it. Many uh, scholars have come and uh, said that. And uh, in, in the science also, uh, earlier, before this, uh, the, the scientists have been uh, doing work in neuroscience uh, in terms of uh, regulation of emotions and uh, science researches on emotions. Uh, they, they have been saying that uh, the, these emotions are static and they are with us uh, while we are born and then we have to bear it and then we have to die with that, right? So in, in Buddhism and in the Indian cultural system and in, in Indian educational system and particularly the you know science of mind and that uh, many of the schools like Vedanta, Vaisheshi, Karnyaya, Sankhya, you know, the Jaina and we all have a approach to how to deal, you know, the emotions and uh, how to work on mind. So India has a very rich uh, uh, culture and civilization and tradition of uh, looking into the mind, particularly the tradition of Nalanda has uh, done a tremendous work on this. So emotions can be controlled, emotions can be regulated. Once we know the natures, know the nature of uh, the emotions and the system of emotion, then we can control, we can regulate our emotion. So if you don't want to be unhappy, then the key to make yourself happy is within yourself, right? In your hands. So you can regulate your emotion and then um, and remove the causes and conditions, right? And you can feel that, you can experience it. It is not something that if you start doing this after two, three decades, then you you'll you know start feeling some getting some results. This is not the case. You can instantly get the result, feel the result, and you can appreciate the practice and understanding on the basis of you, which you practice it. Right. So therefore, 
is immensely Im important to understand the nature of mind, the science of mind, the system of mind, and within that very whole system, how emotion has a role to play that can contribute to our happiness and our unhappiness, right? So this is extremely important. So that is why C learning has uh, developed uh, this whole course uh, uh, with the, you know based on His Holiness's uh, the uh, the philosophy of uh, mind and emotions. And His Holiness he, is uh, his uh, very uh, kind of uh, favorite term, the map of the mind. You, in order to go to a certain place, you need to have a map, right? And uh, now these days you have a G GPS. So it would be good, if, at, you know, down the line, if we have, uh, if we can get some kind of, uh, um, GPS, of the yeah, GPS of the mind, then when it clicks, then you can understand where you are going to go, right? Where you are going to end up. So before ending over there, you can just regulate it, right? If you have G the GPS of uh, the if of the mind, but uh, before having that, GPS. Uh, uh, software may not necessarily be required. You have the feeling. Once the you know anger triggers, you have this understanding that what it is going to lead to you, lead you to what e extent, and then right away you can control it. Right? If you are driving and uh, the GPS is telling you that you are going to end up with a very you know bad road, then you will shift the line. Right? You will shift the road. Right? So similarly, you can do it. GPS, if you have the understanding of system of mind, if you have a proper understanding of uh, the you know, whole system of the emotion, and then you also have uh, the understanding, good understanding of regulating it, experience and practice of regulating it, then you can assume where you are going to be ending up, right? And so we, you can regulate very well, and then you can feel that, oh, Earlier, one month back, uh, I learned about it, and prior to that, I did not, uh, you know, know how to handle anger. But now I can ha handle anger, but it won't, uh, you know, be. You might not be successful right away in handling anger or any other emotions uh, very easily. It is uh, uh, difficult, but it is doable. Constantly, you know, practice it. Then you can earlier in the beginning stage, if you can handle, if your graphic of anger is up to 10, and then if you are able to handle it and uh, calm it down to some extent, then later, if you keep the practice on, then you can be able to reduce it, uh, almost bringing it down to the zero level, right? And then again, you have to be careful that it doesn't arise again, right? So regulating it, you know, being aware of your emotion, that is very important. And what are their impacts uh, is also very important. What are the ca causes and conditions? If I do this, then in anger will trigger. So therefore, it is better not to jump into this area, which might trigger anger, right? So these are the very detailed and uh, uh, lots of detailed uh, descriptions are given in uh, Buddhist psychology and cognitive, uh, Buddhist psychology and epistemology uh, and, and uh, system of mind. So, Gishil um, so Hagdola has been uh, involved in uh, C learning uh, for the many uh, years uh, with the Emory University, involving directly with the project. So, it is very you know, uh, appropriate that he is here today uh, with you and for the next two years, grab as much as possible, right? Two and days. ask, two days, yeah, <laughs> two days. And uh, so ask as many questions uh, uh, as possible and whatever kind of fundamental questions that you have may not necessarily be related directly to the topic, but if you have certain fundamental questions in your mind, just put it before him and, you know, grab the opportunity to get answers for those things. Kishla has been not only you know, knowing about this, but also has been practicing on this. So therefore, it is a great opportunity. And we are a little bit uh, behind the time, but I think since you have a tea break for uh, half an hour, so I think uh, uh, if we can reduce it by another 10 minutes, that is uh, permissible, right? So I thank you all, and particularly Kishla for coming here. and. Uh, 
and and uh, you know very attentive and uh, serious and active participation is required as you do always thank you very much keje la tola choda ne veri ta ge singo samde namni ne kalop sa ge na la tu ji chi shuei de ne de sab jong di dan de ne ani keje ka ji shu na samsung de sab jong de ji dan na ning lo ni don chu ge lo ge ani jinda ge bin na lo pe le ge sab jong ji re zai chane ro nam ju ngan zu de la lop chen dra mi de ji re pe na phe ik dan de she jo phe ki ke ik dan de she jo ge ani sab jong da bo dan ta na shin ge ngan zu de la sang chu ge lop chen ro sang chu ge lop chen do ji sam no dan so na kon sa jo ge song song dan da ton lo sar pe sang jo dan ani chelo ge cham le kalwa ni yor wa ina ya ta di ta lo dan da dan da ken zu ye de ge ge jin da lo rim thang bo dan ni ba ni nang lo yo ma re lo rim sum ba dan si ba ni nang lo yo re ti chu di ga su ti ki lop sen dan de chi ni dan dan ga su ti ki sab jong ni ko di shi ru ru a ni na na ni ngan zu shu he ki ti zu ti chi ta je ngan zu ki e de kong sen cha je jin da dun bi nang lo ma do ge shi la la ngin sen shu ma tu bo ni ga su ge shi la sam dan a ni ku de li shi wo yu re ken sang me ken ge ru ra ti chi ni ma kom chi ni dan da ba do la song re ro an ji dan nam ji ni ngan zu sab jong di dan de ka sa ze sang jong dan de shi jo ki le gul mang bo ji pel ge yu re pe na na ning do sam dan a ngan ge de e ngan zu de ka sa sangju ki lopsen tijol la ni gom jong dar chia dau ta an da na jing ki ngaju ki nge dem bang ni ma gen chiring tun dub la la kan di na wa shui chin di wa long su le gul dau tin de e kar si ora rangjung khor yu ta sung gyop chie ki thela dau ta tin de ki ani na wa tin de shui re ina da sing dong de zu chia dau ta tin de ki ken ni ngaju tin da nang lo la tak ba ra shi shi ma yin ba chin ro la len tin de kom ba chi gap tum na sam ni be zun dau chie re de ina tin zu yang the ga le la bo yo ma ro ta pe na ngaju de sing dong ta ko tin na ngaju ki pang ga nang lo la khor pang ga ki je su ki dikshi ji ro de ta tin ba chi khor ma do ngaju kha ju ma ju su ni dik yo ma ro wa ani dindig ani chilo ki jaga ki singal sing dong ta ko dan ani dik ma ro ti chi di ko su dindig den dik ma de chi ni yang ngaju labda ki khor yu sang ma so ya dau ta dindig den ti si le ga den de chi yo ro wa ani ma ong ba ina ya tan de nyew ri ta la shuk shuk ga re ani ngaju ki ngo su sang ju dan de chi yo lop sin de la la leng ki thene ani ji le gul da bu din de pel tum nas di ki ding ngarang ki le gul da bu jin ro ani sang ma lo tu chi shue